It is an experience you cannot imagine unless you are there. It kind of changes the scheme of your life. Service members fighting for our country in a foreign land. When you go over there for the first time, you think like every single thing's an IED or everything. Everybody that walks up to the car, you're thinking they're going to pull out a some kind of a gun or something. Spending months, even years, away from home. Being in dangerous situations all the time, you know, all those things over a long period of time take toll of you. And when it's over. You want to feel like you're normal, but you're not. Army veteran Ebony Campbell returned from Iraq in 2004 after a 15-month deployment. Nothing set in stone to say, hey, this is how you get back to normal life. Because <laughs> At that point, what is normal life to you, you know? We're the fourth uh, largest state when it comes to redeployment, or as far as the number of veterans that are serving in um, the war. Nakia Williams is the program manager for Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom at the North Little Rock VA Hospital. She says since the war on terrorism began, Arkansas service members, including the National Guard, are seeing more time overseas than ever. Our veterans now are serving more tours. Um, Vietnam era veterans typically served one tour. Many of our veterans are serving two, three, even four tours. Jesse Clark is a Marine Corps Reserves veteran who served eight months in Iraq in 2006. He has friends who've been on five back-to-back -back deployments, and it's taken a toll. I had guys that um, family members passed away while they were over there that they didn't get to, you know, see, and I had guys that their wives divorced them while they were over there. Society really doesn't understand some of the problems that they're enduring because of the multiple tours. And while the war in Iraq may be over, for some, it is the war within their minds they continue to fight. Those thoughts, those feelings, those memories are so vivid, so real. They can find themselves as though they are truly still in danger. Dr. Vince Roca is the program director for the post-traumatic stress disorder unit at the Central Arkansas Veterans Healthcare System. He says not all service members come home with PTSD, a severe anxiety disorder that can develop after a life-threatening experience. But for those who deal with the constant fear and stress it brings, everyday tasks become all the more difficult. There'll be some trigger that happens now. It could be a smell. Uh, could be something you see, could be something you hear, it could be the humidity in the air, it could be the temperature. I was very jumpy, should I say. Campbell served as a medic with the Army, and although she does not suffer from PTSD, the habit of protecting herself did not go away once she came home. Loud noises were the thing for me. I remember one time um, somebody's tire blew out and I almost hit the floor. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was like, did I see that? <laughs> And after living for so long with so little, Clark says adjusting back to the land of plenty did not come easy. You come back here and people are just enjoying all these great things that they have and they're still complaining about it. And you just, it's, it just makes you mad. They're not going to get over it, are they? Mm -mm. Jesse and Casey Clark are newlyweds. We went on a blind date. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the few blind dates on earth that actually works. Married in October, they just moved into their new home in Bryant. Can you bring that pot back over here, babe? Casey, a dental hygienist, Jesse, a realtor, and Little Rock firefighter. And we'd always grill like chicken or goat. I mean, that was basically what you had over there. Over there in Iraq, where Jesse deployed with the 3rd Battalion, 23rd Marines in 2006. It gives you that sense of accomplishment, I guess, and eliteness. I, I don't know how else to put it. I'm glad that I got the chance to serve my country. Ebony Campbell spent 15 months in Iraq as an Army medic. For her, life on the front lines became increasingly difficult. I couldn't get around like everybody else. But I'm a medic, too, so it's like, I don't want to complain that I'm sick all the time. She returned home from war safely, but with a debilitating disease. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, like, almost immediately. And then it got worse and worse and worse, so I didn't come home and everything wasn't normal. I came home, I was sick. I couldn't get in and out the tub. I obviously, I couldn't write. I couldn't pick up things. I couldn't. I was tired all the time. And while Clark and Campbell had two different war experiences, the challenges they faced as returning veterans are similar. And I was angry a lot. I mean, not, I wasn't, you know, I wouldn't call it depressed as much as I was just angry. Anxiety, maybe depression, um, being irritable, you know, things of that nature that you probably don't notice, but it's going on. And you don't really know why, but it's, mm -hmm. 
it's still there. You really don't want to talk to anybody because you don't really feel like people understand why you're angry because you don't really know. I mean, you don't, it takes you a while to figure it out too because you know, you're like, man, why am I so mad? Sometimes you just want to be by yourself. You don't want anybody to bother you. You're depressed. You don't know what's going on. You're hurting. They are all feelings many veterans experience coming home after deployment, leaving their normal lives, returning to find those lives are not the same, and neither are they. I had, you know, a lot of people look after me, a lot of people to come home to that were just right there if I need anything, um, but also I had a job. Clark resumed firefighting as soon as he returned, getting back into the routine he knew before Iraq. But some of his brothers in arms were not as fortunate. So there were some guys that they didn't come back to that. They came back to, to no school, no job, had a really hard time getting a job or got a job that it's like a gas station attendant when they've just been over in Iraq serving their country. Six, seven, <laughs> Campbell says after years of battling arthritis, she is now in college studying to be a personal trainer. It's life, you know, you just deal with things and you move on. Whether it's in states or in Iraq or whatever, you know, everything has its purpose and you can either dwell on the bad or you can take the good out of it. And Keep it moving. Staying Army strong, even without the uniform. Right now I consider myself a civilian, but I know that I was a soldier and it's something I'll always uh, be proud of. Um, I don't I have no regrets at all. No, you like that stuff more than I do. Clark received honorable discharge papers in the mail just weeks ago. But now that I've got a wife, it would probably be a wholly, totally different experience for me. But the pride he carries from serving his country has not faded. I've got my combat boots sitting right outside and you know you just look at them and you think about how many miles you put on those carrying a heavy pack in over 100 degree weather. Staying true to his motto, once a Marine, always a Marine. There's still a piece of me that is a Marine that will be a fighter and a, the guy on the, the front line on the tip of the spear. I mean that's that's who I am. Don't suffer alone. You gotta find that link with somebody that'll make you let it go. It is a campaign designed to reach veterans. It's for the guys who couldn't come back, so you owe it to them to live well, because they're not here with their families. Both young and old to help them adjust to civilian life. Since 2002, about 2.3 uh, million troops have served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And of those, about 700,000 are receiving VA medical care across the nation. Nakia Williams is the program manager for Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom at the Central Arkansas Veterans Health Care System. Our program is here to ensure that our veterans have uh, easy access to the VA. Serving as a gatekeeper to a complex system with multiple programs, guiding them to the services they need. They're missing out on so many uh, opportunities and resources that are available and oftentimes they are not aware of the programs that we have to offer here at the VA. Programs designed to help the walking wounded, those physically healthy. Just not being able to cope with life as a civilian. But facing other challenges upon returning home, like finding a job. We can take and work with anyone who doesn't know anything at all about computers all the way up to someone trying to get into college or graduate school and have classes and support for them from homelessness, substance abuse, and brain injuries, all the way to the most serious mental health issue. What we do is identify people who are at risk for suicide. Janine Taylor, suicide prevention coordinator, says Arkansas ranks 13th nationally in the number of suicides committed each year, and veterans are twice as likely to attempt it. There are lots of things that drive people to think about ending their lives, and, and the more losses they have, the more depressed they get and, and the less they feel like they have reason, the less reason they feel like they have to live. And no matter the status of a veteran's application for benefits at the regional office, medical care is always available. So the access to care is much better uh, than it was in the past. That's something that we didn't do as well for our returning veterans from Vietnam. And I think that's something that has been a priority for the, from the secretary all the way down. Vietnam Air veterans were told, you'll have to live with it. Dr. Vince Rocco with the VA's Outpatient Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Unit says the Vietnam War propelled research and mental illness in veterans. When Vietnam era veterans came back, the term PTSD did not exist. In fact, many veterans making these reports, it's almost as though I'm not here, I'm back there. Some folks thought they had schizophrenia and they were giving them medications for schizophrenia back then. 
Today, the VA's treatments are giving veterans coping skills to deal with the trauma of war. We'd ask veterans to, to give the VA another look if for some reason or another they had a bad experience in the past. Giving life back after war. You have one question to ask yourself. Is the quality of my life what I'd like it to be? If the answer is no, you have served our country. The VA is here to serve you. The Crown Plaza Hotel in West Little Rock is a long way from the war zone. In the movie Top Gun, what game was being played that caused all the pilots to have to flex between shots? <laughs> and that's a welcome relief to the 50 married couples here. How many calories do you burn while kissing? <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, learning, and growing together. Is it going to change anything, just the fact that I'm right, or would I rather just be happy? Okay, all right. But the fun and games of the three-day weekend camouflage a deeper goal. Facing life and death issues, um, training in, in some very intense environments, that's things that you won't find normal couples doing. Captain Jeremy Miller is the full-time support chaplain for the Arkansas National Guard. He spends one weekend a month teaching guardsmen and their spouses how to create and keep a healthy marriage. Communication, we want that to be the key. How do they speak to each other? What do they talk about? What do they argue about? How do they argue? Whenever he's in Iraq, there's nothing really new to say other than, yeah, there's sand. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Brandon Marvel and his wife, Crystal, have been married for three years. And while Brandon has served two previous tours. Well, yeah, she's got it, but in reality, she probably needs that, that phone call every now and then just to, just to hear you. His third was a first for Crystal. Whenever they leave, you still think that maybe it's not necessarily true. Um, and that they're going to walk back through the door any minute, but they don't. Brandon returned home just two months ago. You have the attraction again. You have all, all the instant love thoughts and everything like that. But the stress of daily life did not take long to build up. The honeymoon phase of coming back home ends abruptly, and you, you have to find that, that, that common ground where both of you can communicate again. Have you ever heard a friend? Say that, uh, I just fell out of love with her. I'm not in love with him anymore, I just fell out of love. Crystal signed them up for the all expense paid Strong Bonds Retreat. I was able to find out a little bit more about his personality and some of that changes too whenever they're gone and they come back. Learning how to adjust to a life together again instead of thousands of miles apart. They may be more easily frustrated, so you're able to find out a little bit more how to handle that. We've had multiple couples that have gone through this program before deployments and even come back after deployments. They said it made them even stronger. They learned how to communicate. They learned when they have their pre-deployment fights, when they have their mid-deployment fights, how to work through those things, how to just keep talking. And talking the right way is something Brandon says has been a challenge. I'm a staff sergeant. I have people under me and I'm very direct. I tell them what I need and I expect it to get done. It doesn't work whenever you're <laughs> telling your wife. <laughs> and then I have to be a little bit more understanding as to what kind of atmosphere that he's been in because I've never been in that type of atmosphere or environment at all. And we tell ourselves the false lie that we...